Didn't stop. Family shop. Think Thayer. Come on, let's get rolling. Come on, let's get moving. Think Thayer. Hello and welcome to Falcon Weekly here on BGSUFalcons.com. I'm Evan Pivnik, joined by the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons, Chris Bergeron. Coach, uh, a split for your team this past weekend on the road at Lake Superior State. Uh, what would you take away from this weekend? Uh, well, I took away that Lake State's as good as I thought they were. Um, we've watched them on tape. We see some results. Um, I know Damon and his staff um, have, have turned things around up there. Not that it was awful, but there's a there's a good real stamp of him on that team um, so you saw that and I saw the the atmosphere at Lake Superior is back I mean it was nice to see some people in that rink and obviously that's a storied program from our team um, I saw two good efforts I really liked the way we played both nights from a from a, a general perspective obviously going into the third period with a lead on Friday and losing that game is not even close to what we want but I thought we defended really hard through two periods and parts of the third. We didn't score enough. And that's what it came down to. Our process graded out good, um, good enough to win. We had a power play in the second. We had a power play in the third that would have given us, we couldn't get that two goal lead. And uh, ultimately it cost us. And then there was a bounce here, a bounce there, ended up in our net. We fought hard, got back three to two, and, and then they scored in the empty net. But. It was, it was tough to really be too negative about the way that game went from start to finish. Um, Saturday, I was really proud of the group. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough situation. We, we really played well Friday and walked away with nothing to show for it. Another, again, game in a difficult place to play against a difficult opponent. And 2-2 two, two going into the third. We had two one-goal leads, again, couldn't hold. 2-2 two, two going into the third, uh, a, a sophomore and a freshman make a play shorthanded. Now it's 3-2 us, where it could have been the exact opposite if we give up a power play goal. And we were able to get the, the two-goal lead and then the three-goal lead. So it was a, um, a, a good weekend. I think going into a tough place against a tough team, you have to give yourself two opportunities to win by playing a certain way. I think we did that. Well, it seems like every time these two teams play, it's the, the stats go out the window, the standings go out the window. It's just uh, two really hard-fought games regardless. Yeah. The, the, the four times we played them last year, it was 1-1-2. One, one, uh, we, we tied both games here and we split up there at Lake. And, and again, they're, 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 they're a program like ours probably, we're, we're a couple years ahead in terms of a transition, in terms of a culture change, um, in terms of trying to bring back a tradition that once was as strong as there was in college hockey. So I do think there's some similarities. Um, uh, and and, and I, I like the fact that our guys dug in and were ready my terms for a fist fight. You know, that's what I look at those games against Lake Superior. You're, you're going to be in a fist fight and you better be ready. Not not literally, but figuratively. And, and uh, I like the way you guys responded to that. Offensively, Mitch McLean with another uh, fantastic week, fantastic weekend, another hat trick for him. Uh, he's just been unreal as of late. What can you say about his game? Yeah, I mean, his game's been really good. You know, he, he hasn't done it by accident. He hasn't been handed anything. Mitchell's had an opportunity since the day he got here and taken full advantage of that opportunity both on and off the ice and what's happening now is the puck is finding him I mean you know his second goal um, had eyes it was a he, he's basically I don't want to speak for him but I think he was passing that puck and he hit a goal he's pad and went in the first goal puck hits him drops he shoots it in the empty net and his third goal was was um, was, an, was, was an empty net goal now again I don't want to downplay what he's done um, because he's been really good for us uh, not only has he put up numbers that his resume says he would he was going to put up especially late in his career um, I shouldn't say it that way as an upperclassman uh, which he's you know one semester into his junior year um, but he's been a leader for us too he's a guy that uh, really positive on the bench trying to pick people up making sure that the group stays focused and poised on the task at hand and um, lots of positives to say about Mitchell McLean and, and, and he's just a, a, he's a good kid to be around every day so uh, we're happy to have him. Although he's the Falcons leading scorer there's also some other scorers involved as well and it seems to be spread out pretty much throughout the, the four classes. Yeah I mean you've watched this Evan for a few years now I, uh, maybe with the exception of one or two guys over the course of time, um, it has to be by committee. I mean, we've got some good players. Um, you know, when you've got, uh, I think our second, third, and fourth leading scorer, all defensemen, or third, fourth, and fifth, or something like that. I mean, we've got some good players, you know. And we've got some forwards that, you know, haven't had the first half in terms of numbers, 
that we were expecting. You know, Stephen Bayless comes to mind. He's playing good hockey. But what, what, what that's good for us is that shows there's, 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 there's a chance here, you know, for we can get all of this stuff pieced together where uh, we've got kind of all, all things clicking at the same time. And we should be a handful because we know we can defend. Uh, and, and scoring by committee is something we take pride in and have to be. So hopefully we can get some guys that we felt were going to be part of that scoring committee, get them scoring, at least putting up points. Uh, we could be, uh, you know, a tough, tough team to handle. Well, goaltending this past weekend, Chris Nell Friday night, uh, Ryan Bednard Saturday night. I know you talk about it all the time. It's a, it's a game of results. Is that going to factor into this weekend against Michigan Tech? Well, I think more so for Ryan than for Chris. I mean, Chris wants his results right. His last two results are a tie and a loss, and, and, and Ryan's last two results are both wins. So I think what's happening is Ryan is earning more games, and, and not that Chris is, is earning less, but, but Ryan is earning games. So I think, you know, you, you see... I've got no problem with a 1-1 situation. People know that. They've watched us, whether it's Burke Hammond, um, Burke Nell. Well, you know, that, 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 I think that can work. And, and uh, uh, I, I think a, a Nell Bednard 1-1 uh, thing wouldn't be too bad. So um, it, it's, it, it's, it's a daily thing, Evan. We're not going to make any decisions today. But right now, both guys deserve to play, and that's a good thing. Well, the Huskies come to town this weekend. Uh, another really tough team to play uh, as we start really getting to conference play and start to standings, uh, watch the standings yeah. as well. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, Evan, they're, they're a program that we want to be like. Uh, they've, they've really established themselves in the non-conference world as a, as a hard team to play against. They've been in the national tournament. They've won a regular season, at least a share of a regular season title. Uh, they play the game the way we want to play it, hard, north, fast. Um, they've had good special teams. I mean, it's just that's that's the type of team we want to be, and we think it's a rivalry. I don't want to speak for them. I don't know if they look at us as a rival or not. Um, one of the things that comes to mind about the series is, other than a playoff series three years ago, I don't think we've played well against them in our rink, uh, and that's a tribute to them, uh, but it is a, an area where we can improve and need to improve. Uh, it's a big weekend for us, not any bigger than last weekend or the weekend after, but it is a rival team. It is a team that we're looking up at in the standings. Uh, and it is the only time we get to play them this year. We don't go to Houghton this year. So uh, we want to take advantage of the opportunity to play Michigan Tech, and, and uh, we're looking forward to it. What's the big key going into this weekend? You know, I, I, I think being mentally and physically engaged, and that's, that's such a coach statement, Evan. I mean, the process of our game is the key. We want to make sure the special teams are right. We want to make sure we're engaged mentally and physically, individually and collectively. We, 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 we want to create offense. They're a team that's hard to create offense against. Um, we need to defend. I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. They, they challenge every, every aspect of your game, all three zones, all three areas, special teams, both sides, offense, defense. So it's, uh, there's lots to focus on. But really, the, 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 the key for us is we don't have to do anything special. We don't have to be somebody we're not capable of being. We just have to be the best version of ourselves from an individual and a collective standpoint. And that's the challenge, and that's the message. Um, this is a team that will expose you if you're not that. Well, the Falcons and the Michigan Tech Huskies underway this weekend, Friday and Saturday night from the BGSU Ice Arena. Coach Bergeron, always appreciate the time, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.